soldier technology um in the last lesson as um you remember if you remember on page 95 we discussed it it was scale in the hobby of 132 world war ii but in today's lesson we are going to discuss the forbidden subject of the 13 things that toy soldier Collectors hate things that we god. Oh, went in my coffee. Things that we goddamn hate. Okay, so let's let's get into this right away. You know, like like I said, you need to tell a story with the six or eight or ten poses that you do have. So. What are the six basic poses of any World War II toy soldier set? Here they are. Okay, so I'm going to show you the six basic poses of any good, well-thought-out set that, that will make the set universally useful forever for people who like to battle with your plastic. Okay, so pay close attention because this, to me, is the hallmark of a great set. Pose number one, standing, aiming, firing a rifle. Super needed, very important. You need that standing, aiming thing. Don't worry that this is a Soviet weapon or the scope. That's meaningless. It's just he's firing, standing, aiming, firing his rifle. Pose number two. Firing submachine gun from waist. Super important. Pose number three. Kneeling. Aiming, firing a rifle. Pose number four. Throwing a grenade, but still holding a weapon. So something like this. I can't fit it in the, the, the frame, but throwing a weapon while holding grenade. Pose number five, running with rifle or weapon. Uh, um, yeah, sometimes it's good if they have a bayonet, but so running, I looks like that. I'm gonna exaggerate me running. Yeah. Ah, attack, running. Or running. You know what I mean. I can't fit it in the frame. And pose number six. In a prone position, firing a heavy, either a heavy machine gun, but if, they, but if he's by himself, he has to have the ammunition canister. Or in prone position, firing a rifle. So that's, that rounds it out. If you have those six basic poses in any set, you can have a damn good battle. But there's, there's one more that they'll always throw in. And anything after that is a wild card. And last but not least, a commander usually includes binoculars firing a pistol. And you know, like, forget this stuff. I'm talking like firing, holding on to binoculars, firing a pistol. And if you have all that, you should have a well-rounded set. Seven basic poses. Hopefully you have eight poses, so the other one's a throwaway. You could do something interesting, but get the basics in, guys.
right off the bat, but I don't want to pick on any current toy soldier manufacturers. I'm hoping when they see this, when they come to my class, they're going to start to understand a few basic things because I want them and we all want them to know what we really want as real collectors. We buy the, the toys, we play with them and we collect them. We know what we want and we know what pisses us off. So, so pet peeve number one, let's get to it. So pet peeve number one, too many running figures. running figures. This isn't World War I. This isn't medieval. World War II was a static war. Okay. Sin number two. Number two. Looking in the wrong direction. Wrong direction. Like, what is this guy doing? What direction is he looking in? I don't know. Look at this guy. He's looking at me. What's he looking at me for? Wouldn't it be better if he was, like, looking straight forward? Now, but this one's the most ridiculous of all. Look at this guy. It's, he's suffering like he needs an exorcist. Look at him. Whose head twists backwards to, <laughs> to yell for his friends? That is the most ridiculous. I tried it. It's not possible. Okay, piss off number four. This is something that pisses, actually, the smarter, more sophisticated collectors get pissed off by this. Number four. A one man operating a heavy weapons. Okay? You can't. You can't have one person operating a bazooka. Here's what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is what we're dealing with. A one guy operating a mortar. That, that would never happen. That's totally insane. This is bad. And this, by Plastic Platoon, is good. You have a guy operating a mortar and... And the other guy loading the mortar. Okay, this is bad. It's Larry's um, machine gunner. He's uh, firing an MG34 by himself. It's a very violent weapon that also uh, devours about a thousand rounds a minute. And then this is the responsible way of doing things. You got to commit. If you're going to do heavy machine, this guy's firing an MG42, uh, and the other guy's loading and spotting for him. This is good. Okay, this is bad. This is Airfix, um, and the guy's firing a bazooka by himself. That's stupid. And to make it even worse, I was going to bring this up. Uh, uh, kneeling figures with no bases. They, quite often, it's... Look, look at that. They fall over. And if they don't do it properly, it just, it's just it's unreliable. But nobody would ever fire a damn bazooka by themselves. Bad! We hate that. This is done right by Richard Conti. You have a guy who is firing the bazooka, and you have the loader. Look at that. He's loading. Load him in! There we go. Look. Excellent! Two-man loading team for a bazooka. I mean, a two-man team for a bazooka. This next problem has um, been slowly annoying many of us over the last 20 years. Um, it's, it, it, it's, it's like a pimple on your neck, and then it grows into a bump, and then it's a cyst, and it's a goiter, like, like a giant goiter. Like, you can't have that. It's bases that are getting so big. And the figure's this big, and they're standing on a fucking base. This is not cool for a base. It's not cool. You, you want your figures, you want your figures to be neutral. Neutral. So like, like Airfix used to do. They just give it a flat little base. Why? Because it keeps the figures consistent, but also you can have the figure in the back of a house. 
You can have your figure firing somewhere. You can have your figure standing on a tank, whatever you want. But if he's sitting on a mountain, you can't do that. It, it limits. It limits the figure. The, the figure it limits the figure. Okay. Oversized bases are a sin. Who threw that? Um, a, a pet peeve number ten is in World War II. Let's. The, I, it would be so rare to waste a pose on rifle butting. Butting. With rifle. That's number, let's call it number 10. It doesn't happen very often. It's rare. Like, people shoot with guns, man. They shoot with guns. They don't go attacking with rifles. This isn't the Old West. This isn't, this isn't the Napoleonic period. This is World War II. Brrr, like, God damn. Brrr, okay? There's no people butting with... I'm going to butt with a, with a Bren gun. This is stupid. Stop that. Stop the, the hitting people with helmets and with butting with pistol whipping. It's, it's silly. you got to stop that. A personal pet peeve of mine. I, I've been seeing a lot of it lately. Uh, like, there's been more than one company guilty of this. And, and it's, I, don't, I don't get it. It's kind of kooky to me. I'm going to show you an example of why it makes no sense. But there's been about three companies doing it. I, I, I don't know. Okay, ready for this one? Uh, si uh, yeah, like, offense number 12. Bum sitting. Bum sitting. Bum shitting. Bum sitting. Can't have it. It doesn't go over well. I'm going to show you. Okay, this is what I mean by bum sitting. Normally, like a bazooka guy would be, or anybody doing anything would be firing like this. Or whatever, how do you fire? Boom! But when you have people sitting on their asses, like you can't fire a bazooka like this. You'll, you'll fall over. It's ridiculous. If they got to fire a bazooka, the recoil. It's, it's silly. Can't be done. How about how about a guy firing a rifle? Okay, I can see it once in a while. You know, like you have a a sniper. He's sitting there like this, and he sits there for hours. Okay, once in a blue moon. But we're seeing too many of these bum sitters lately. Watch. That's stupid. Oh. A piece of chalk actually went into my coffee. Look at that. See it in there? Ridiculous. Gross. Okay. Um, here's a weird one. We've been seeing this trend as of late. Actually, no. We've been seeing this trend from the, since the 70s, even the 60s. Weird faces. Like, like, like sometimes, like, like, um, Atlantic or or Italy, they 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 the figures all looked like they had Down syndrome, like weird, like puffy eyes and like weird faces. But we've been seeing these trends lately, where the manufacturer instead of doing a good neutral face, they sort of allow the the sculptor or the artist to take artistic license. So. Some sets as of late, the faces are like this. Like, like, you can't have that. Everyone looks like they're born from the same litter and they all have Down syndrome or, or some sort of retardation. I don't know. It's just try to keep the faces amazingly neutral. It's just weird, man. It's weird. Just... All right, another another weird another weird one that uh, I've discussed this with many other professional colleagues of mine, and um, uh, oversized or undersized heads 
and hands. Now we have a lot of a lot of oversized heads and some pinheaded undersized heads, and that both of them are insane. And and hands, either too big or too small. Try to look a hand. This is a hand, okay? A hand, a hand. A hand isn't this big compared to my head, and it's not this small compared to. Look at that special effects. That's small. <laughs> Okay? Try to keep the heads and hands, like, realistic. Go to sculpting school and uh, the, 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 the Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo thing. A head is one-sixth, usually, the length of a body. Look at that, that famous that Leonardo da Vinci thing, okay? Study that. Um, I'll show you some examples right here. Okay, uh, we just have uh, two more here. Now... Um, this next one is it's always bothered me. It happens once in a while, but it, I'll tell you something. It should never happen. And if it happens, you get a D. Now you get an F. With me, you get an F. A left-handed shooter. Remember, you have a limited amount of, po of poses. You paying attention? You have a limited amount of poses. Uh, the, the, the thing is, when you have a toy soldier set, you want to be able to have tons of multiples. You want to be able to have, like, you know, where's a... God damn it. Here. Right there. Like, I, I'm going to show... You have a guy, like, firing... But when you have a guy firing like this, first of all, I don't even think... I, I think that when somebody is trained in school, uh, like military uh, training, even if you're left-handed, I think they train you to fire right-handed because... The rifle's designed. They don't make left-handed rifles. So you shouldn't do it. It's weird. And now, um, we only have a few more minutes left in this class. Um, we're going to end it with my, with my number one. The, the number one worst pet peeve that any toy soldier maker can do. You ready for this? Let me explain this. Most, 98% of all toy soldier battles take place on a desk or on a table or on the floor. The number one pet peeve I have, which is by... Like, what the hell are you going to do with a figure that's firing upwards when everybody else... Is is at a ninety degree angle when everyone when everyone's on a, on a on a flat playing field. What are you gonna do with a guy firing upwards like that? It makes the figure ninety nine percent of the time freaking useless. Useless. I'm not firing. I'm firing up. That's useless. It's a waste of a figure. If you could convert it away from that, you would. Don't sacrifice the few poses you have to have some idiot firing in the air. It's ridiculous. We need to learn to learn to be smart about toy soldiers. A very, very important, very important subject in our culture and the economics of, you know, all that stuff. All the economic, uh, all the uh, academic stuff. So, my name is Christian Aldo, Professor Christian Aldo. Anyways, uh, any questions? Any questions? Yes, you. Hey, sir, I just wanted to bring up, in case you didn't know, like, you can also buy really amazing bags of, of toy soldiers at the dollar store. I know they're made in China, everything, but they, they also include, like, airplanes and tanks and a whole bunch of really great stuff for, like, just a few dollars. And, and then, ah, get, ah, get out of my class. And don't come back. Oh. Oh.